Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Mahogany True Talk. Yes, it's another another week, another session, and as usual, we've got a great session lined up for you today. Um, we've got it with a, a good friend, someone who's done amazing things within the industry, has been in the industry for over 30 years. Now, trust me, to be in this industry for over 30 years and to keep going, that says a lot, you know, that really says a lot. So I'm really looking forward to talking to him today to find out how he has survived, how he has stayed on board for so long. Um, So guys, let me get the introductions out of the way quickly. I keep having problems seeing things on this, my screen. I think we need, I need to change my cover. Because when the writing is in white, I can't see. Anyway, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Mahogany True Talk. My name is Shola Yabadi, a.k.a. Mr. Mahogany. And Mahogany True Talk is a chat show where we speak with industry experts in the event industry and getting the true grit, getting everything about them, okay? We're going to be bringing you on in a minute, Mr. Akin. Just give me a second, sir. We'll be with you as I just finished the introductions. So Mahogany Events, production and event, is um, an expirational event and production company that handles production and event management for clients. Show focuses on everything, event management, host, music, and even food. And we'll be bringing you the top guns like we're bringing you today. King Odeku, who is, he is a, in Yoruba, we say Egbon in the business, he, or I, white people will say he is a veteran within the industry, so he is the daddy of events, so as you can see, he's on board now, he also, is, he has other hats, let me just tell you, let me, let me open up his whole his own life for everybody. He's a pastor, as you see him so. And as far as I'm concerned, he's also a comedian. Because if you see the jokes, he's always cracking. He's unbelievable. <laughs> so if he ever has problems with doing event rentals, you will see him next to Basket Mouth and AY performing. <laughs> Aki, how are you, sir? Shall I, nice to see you. Good evening. I uh, thank you for the opportunity like this. God bless you, sir. Ah, please, please. The blessing is all yours. But before I get into the nitty gritty, <laughs> yes, let me introduce you to the world so that they know who you are. So Akinboye uh, okay. Odeku is the CEO and founder of Classicus Rentals, a vibrant and charismatic man. Now that's an understatement. Akin is known for his uncanny ability to make people around him happy and relaxed, which is very true. Aki is not just a savvy businessman, he is also a scholar as he holds degrees in both political science and law. I don't understand these people, they will get all these degrees and then become event organizers. I'm confused. <laughs> anyway, he has worked in accounts in a journalistic field and spent years working as a legal officer at Pacific Merchant Bank. With a pedigree okay. like this, It is not surprising that he has been able to birth and groom a company like Classicus to where it is now, a company known for excellence. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Akin Odeku to Mahogany True Talk. Good evening, everybody. Nice to be with you. Okay. One of the reasons, ladies and gentlemen, why we brought Akin onto this show, we were going to have him anyway, but the timing of bringing him on now was absolutely essential because this man and his company has been in business. They just celebrated 30 years in business. And let me tell you something. That is, that is no small feat, particularly in this Nigeria. And it means that he started in the era of when events were not popular, when event rentals were not popular. Do you understand when there was no support and backup of all the various associations and all these other people that we have nowadays? So, first of all, I don't have my hat, but I've taken it off to you. So that's not the best. Hat that is coming off. There's so, nothing on my own Tell us, tell us, 30 years ago, because that's no joke, what inspired you? What made you decide to start Classicus? All right. Um, 
1990, I was working in the Pacific Merchant Bank then in the legal department. And I had the privilege of traveling to the U.S. with my wife. Um, we were at the BJ stores, a very popular store in the U.S. And we saw this small, small canopy. It's called gazebos. They're Aesop's. And um, we decided that we should buy some. Of course, we had to ship them through U-Haul boxes. And we brought it down to Lagos. And um, we decided that we we're going to start a rental company. Uh, in which we'll be renting chairs, tables, and canopies. And fortunately for me, by the time I was coming down the plane, I saw this very big truck along the express road. And I called a friend of mine, Benga Fakile in Pinnacle, who decided to give me a loan then. And um, just one thing led to the other. Chairs, tables, canopies. And that's how Classical started off in 1990 as a family business. But I was still working in the bank then. Then I now resigned after one year in which I had to try what I call troubled waters. And I remember my, my boss. My boss is the, the father of Davido, Dr. Dijadeleke, who's the chairman of Pacific Merchant Bank. Uh, when I resigned, I said I was to go and face the rental business. I, I remember he told me, he said, whenever you want to take your job back, I'll give it to you. Because nobody would have thought that. He didn't believe you are going to succeed. Honestly, he just felt that why would you leave a bank in 1990 when everybody was in the financial world and then say you're going to start renting chairs and because he really liked me. So he said, Look, when you are ready to take your job back, we'll give you. But of course, now when we meet, he says, How are you doing? And I thank God we are going from strength to strength. So, really, when we look at your story, you actually fell into it by luck, it wasn't a planned, conscious decision. Well, not really. I, I would say luck. I don't want to use the word luck. I would use the word a blessing. My, my, my language. You know, um, inspirations come from God. Mm -hmm. Particularly, many people go, let's say somebody starts a um, business center. Everybody joins business center. Uh, somebody goes, starts going to Dubai to buy clothes. People start going to Dubai to buy clothes. But there's always a leading in a man. And then we decided that we're going to carve a niche for ourselves, that there must be a class. So it's, it's something that after we got the gazebos, then we started buying chairs, we started buying tables. And um, I just had to sum up the courage that leave this bank work and face this thing. So I can say that it's the leading of the, uh, of the almighty God. Well, I wasn't a pastor then, mind you. Okay. That's, that's, that, that's good. I mean, as you say, God can lead you in the direction. And we always play, pray for him to lead us in the, in the right direction for us. So this is 30 years for Classicus. Like I said, this is a milestone. You're okay. among very few people. I mean, I think I'm officially, I was 1994. So I'm like 12 okay. years officially. Even though I've been in All the right. business since like nine you, 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 you have four more years to catch up with Classicus. <laughs> I have four more years to catch up with office. Come on, you should laugh. <laughs> you understand? So I'm, I'm, your, I'm your junior in this one. I'm four years behind yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. And I thank you once again for coming life. to my birthday. <laughs> ah, please, please. How can we not go? We don't have a choice, but we don't have a choice. So what has it been like running a business for that long? I'm sure there's been ups and downs. What has the journey been like? Talk us through your experience and tell us, let people understand what I'm really looking for here, Aki. Let people understand because now they see you. Classicus everywhere. Ah, it's okay. Oh, Aki has money. Aki's a big boy. Aki is yeah, this. True. Aki that's is true. that. But they don't that's understand true. what your struggle was like, what you went through to get to where you are now. So please give us a... Give us a... a, a a kind of roadmap to what it was like getting here to where you are now. Okay. All right, so let, let me tell you, I, I was thinking the other day that probably I still have to, I have to write a book on the rental industry because 30 years of going through this business, one needs to share with people. Now, if I tell you this, you won't believe it that the first few years, I nearly gave up and said I wasn't doing this business again, that I wanted to go back to my to the legal practice wow. because of the challenges we have. And I can remember my wife, assistant, in which we had to get um, 
some members of the Redeemed Church to pray. Imagine coming back in the morning, I mean, mm -hmm. getting to work in the morning and all the tires of your lorry is gone. Try. Imagine your staff selling all the chairs to in the Jorah or somewhere. Imagine one thing after the other. You can imagine what I'm saying, Shola. Yeah. And then you find out that the challenges of the society, government policies, importation, dollars going up and down. And particularly for classical, we decided that we want uh, to be uh, a, a rental company that will just, what would I put it, serve quality products. And we find that we have to get those products from abroad. Mm -hmm. Now, when you look at it, 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 it is deemed that the first few years in the world that any business, most 90% of businesses in the first two, three years collapse. Correct. Then the remaining 10% in the next five years, they collapse. Yeah. But guess what? The almighty God has been with us and the determination as a family business to keep on going on. Uh, I'll tell you this. The challenges of the government policies, uh, custom uh, officers, custom duties and all that, workers, our friends in VIO, LASMA, um, what do you call it, um, road safety, our brothers in the area boys. I, I can remember we, we, Julius Baga constructed a road, uh, which is the linking the one in Lupeji to Oshodi. And we set up a tent yeah. in maybe in the early 90s. And they used this very strong demarcation, those, uh, what, what do they call it, those uh, cement demarcations, cement, in which yeah. they demarcate the road. And in the morning, by the time we came, the air boys had carried those things out of the way. So you can see things like that, that are challenges in, in, in your business. And then, of course, you now talk about workers, workers trying to hold you to ransom, workers that have been with you for 10, 15, 20 years. Now, one of the things I'll tell you is that we virtually have gone from one challenge to another. And like I said, we've, we are trying to want to close it down. Mm -hmm. But you need to learn one thing about business. If you concentrate on your business, people will know that that's what you are doing. Yeah. You can be a trader today and be um, a, a, a rice seller tomorrow, and then people are going to cut on you. I tell my workers in the morning when we're praying or thereabouts, I say, it's 10 o'clock, look up. And when they look up, they see Virgin Atlantic going to London. I said, the white man is not better than the black man. The only problem we have is that the black man is indisciplined. Mm -hmm. That plane will leave at 10 a.m. and fly from Ikeja through Sulele and is London bound. You find out, we've had the Shashagis, we have had the Albakas, we have many companies They've collapsed through mismanagement and all that. So I tell my workers that, look at it. If I'm asking you to get a soft drink, which one would you go for first? They said Coke. I said, that's yeah. what it should be. In, in, in this country, where you're mentioning 10 rental organizations, in one of okay. them, at least it was mentioned, Classicus. So let's look at it from this. When you're about to give up, particularly when it comes to your business, you need to be focused. You need mm -hmm. to know how you handle your clients. You know how to balance your, your work. I mean, someone was asking me a few days ago that, how do you do it? You're a pastor, you are you head classicals, and you're a, you're a husband, and you're a father. I said, I don't know it. But one way or the other, God has been able to help me. So as these challenges come, you make up your mind whether you want to face it. Uh, the, I, I saw an article the other day. They, they said, problem not a finish for this world, though. So it means that challenges will always come, but God will always be with you. Now, whatever you're doing, integrity is another thing that most people miss out. If we say we are giving you 500 chairs, let it be 500 chairs. Yeah. We've adopted a system that we deliver a day before. Break down on the We don't, we don't take all jobs. Jobs that we cannot do, we don't take. I can tell you, We've been as far as places like Maduguri, Boni, Kaduna, Olu, Oweri. And people tend to ask that, are there no rental companies there? I just said, I don't know it. But one way or the other, we've been able to go and deliver the, the, the stuff and get it done. So when you look at it, when you look at it, it's been, I, I, I use the word, a tough time 
a difficult time, but at the same time, God has been with us. In the sense that Nigeria is the country in which you cannot plan a budget. You cannot plan things. Forces, unforeseen circumstances will just throw everything away. And like I said, if you're running a business, you need to keep your eyes on the business. I, I tell you, Shala, it is you, Shala Yebade, that God has given the anointing to run Maogani. If you leave it with your workers, they may not be seeing the vision you're seeing. Yes, you can carry them along. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this, that is the major problem we have in this country. When people die, they die with their business because the anointing is upon them and they pass it on. So what am I saying in a nutshell? For the first 10 years, it was rough. The next 10 years, it was also a bit difficult. Then by the time people start knowing who you are and what you do, they will just say, go to Classicus. Go to Classicus. And of course, you are noted for rendering good service. So you have good thinking, good product, good services. But the truth of the matter is where you cannot tell your client to come and redo the wedding. You can't tell them that, please, uh, we are sorry the chairs are late. Uh, you can do your name, naming ceremony again. No. These are things that matter. People may say we are expensive, but we are not really expensive. But it's, what we do is that we don't, don't take any job. We, we look at the jobs we want to take and we mm -hmm. see how we are able to do it. So, once again, it's the challenges of the economy, it's the challenges of workers, it's the challenges of uh, government policies, it's the challenges of people who say, Mr. Classicals, is there a new product? Oh, we saw glass tables. So we need to be a step ahead of others in the sense that we go to China, we go to US, we go to Europe to buy these new products. Nigerians love new things. Oh, do you have transparent tents? That's what they want now. Or do you want to have marble tables? And they'll say, we saw a farm table on Instagram. Could it be yours? So these are the things that uh, have been the situation. And I'll tell you, 15 million people are in Lagos. So the market is there for everybody. But if we have good government policies, not that you are the one that you produce your own water, your own security, uh, you are the one that... You are, everybody's a local government. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you understand what I'm yes. saying? If you come yes. to my, my, my office, my roads are so bad, you put on so much money repairing it. So these are things that are killing businesses. And of course, your brothers in the tax office will come after you. You, you know that. Yes, so just... Tell anybody that wants to do the rental business is very capital intensive. Mm -hmm. You must be determined. You must determine your 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 market, your the people you're dealing with, and then integrity matters. Money is not what matters. Integrity. Jackie, let me ask you this question. Okay, because yes. this is something that I, I have a big debate with, and so far, I've only seen one of my friends do this, and that's Daddy Ali that manages ARM, which is you start a company, you have your company running for 20, 30 years. And like you said, there was a key point you said that when the company, when the founder passes on, the company dies with that person. So my question to you, because I've started it myself, and I think we discussed it at one of our previous meetings, what are you putting in place to ensure that your legacy of classical rentals does not disappear when you eventually pass on, what what's your what's your future plan? How do you make it? You know, I mean, if you look at something like Bill Gates now, he's mm -hmm. having something to do with Microsoft. Do you understand? And there's a series of sure. international companies where the founders have moved on. So what what what's your own version of that? Now, now, now you, you've gone to a very, very dicey area or topic. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth, Shola, and I'm going to say it as it is. That's right. And I'll mention companies. Do you know that Hens, the makers of baked big beans and um, ketchup, it's from that family name? Guinness yeah, Stout. Yeah. The Hines family. Guinness. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Guinness yeah they're still there. I know that. Yeah. 
Um, I went to New York one day, and I was in the southern part of New York, the downtown New York, the lower part. I wanted to buy padlocks. And I entered this shop. It was a Jewish shop. And you believe it that I said, I want about six or eight padlocks. But I want them to be the same key that I can open it. So I don't start cracking my head when I want to lock the office, looking for key one, two, three. And they made the same key for me to open. And I asked the, the guy there. He said, my father was the one that, that is doing this padlock business and locksmith business. My grandfather was also in this business. So my great-grandfather passed to my grandfather, my grandfather to my to my father. Now, this is a this has been a big problem in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You mentioned you mentioned one company that can tell me that you, you, it has been from one generation to another generation to another generation. Now, what 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 are the causes of this? It, it, the truth is that your children will be interested in taking over your business if the enabling environment is there. You see, this generation, they cannot understand why it's so difficult that you have to buy diesel to, buy uh, to run generator every time. This generation, I'm talking about the, 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 this millennial or young generation, you know what I'm talking about, Shala? Mm -hmm. Because it, it, our fathers, when they read and they studied in UK, and in the U.S., they came back home. Yeah. They, they did not say they want to say that. You sample three of your children, you find that two and a half of them will say, I'm not coming back home. Because they are not ready to face what you and I are facing. Wake up tomorrow morning, government policy, they ban all the Okada. Those are examples like that. So mm -hmm. situations like that has made it very impossible for many people to hand over their businesses to their children. Now, th what does that mean? There are still some that are getting their families involved in the business so that they can continue. But I'll tell you this. You decide you want to bring in, if you want to keep it a family business, keep it a family business. But if you cannot get it as a family business, throw it out and let shareholders come into it. And then gradually, of course, later on they may play you out because when somebody has more shares, yeah, it so now becomes, you, you now become a nobody. There. Like health and, <laughs> Yes, yes, that's 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 the price you pay. Yeah. But if you make the envi enabling environment for your children to take over the business, to like the business, because you must have a passion for whatever you are doing. True. Now let, let, let me let me put this this way. I've been doing this business for thirty years. And you won't believe it that just, just a few years ago that one of the event planners just met me at TBS and said, Uncle Aki, are you on Instagram? I said, no. Ah. She said, you're not ready to do business. So if I've been using typewriter, which I've been used to, iPad is the in thing now. So I need to move with this generation. Mm -hmm. So their generation, they're the ones that are now oh, techie. You and I, when we were going to school, we, we, we were carrying slates. Yes, a, sir. B, C, D. This generation from, from birth, they know nothing more than computer and technology. So let's go back to what I'm saying. What do I have in stock for classicals? Yes, I have a son. I'll try and encourage him to take over the business. But one thing about it is that when you give your child the business, you also pass the wealth of knowledge to him to be able to know the pitfalls because this generation they'll bring you useful exuberance they'll take unnecessary risk uh, you've gone through all that but in the event that your son does not take over the business then it will end up in you going in bringing shareholders and of course most people don't want to do that you know what i'm saying Shala? So that's just that's just what I'm going to tell you about that. I mean, I, I hear you on that. And, you know, what you're saying is the truth. But if you don't want your business to die, you don't have a choice. Like me now, you know my gege. I'm grooming my mm -hmm. gege to become yes. the yep. and to take over. So my plans for my business when I die is that eventually you may not even remember that I was one that owned it. It becomes mm -hmm. like a Coca-Cola. You understand? Yeah, that, that's it. Who owned Coca-Cola? 
who owns but no, but, so no, but yeah, yeah. It, it becomes a business like that and in actual Coca-Cola bought they bought it off the original family that started it yes I mean, I mean, what is it? The Turner, or what do you call it? The body of, I, 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 it, it's not the real family that has it now. Mm -hmm. So things have changed in that respect, and I think a lot of people that are listening to this, particularly if they're around they're about our age, they need to be thinking about what is their legacy, how are they passing it on, and they have to pass it on in time, not when they get mm -hmm. to 70, 80. That's when they're trying to pass it on. It needs to be. <laughs> This age that we're at, 50, 60, start bringing them in, even if they're just coming in as vice president. I mean, one of the things that I can say that um, Glow, chairman is doing is Glow. He started that. You know, Bella is involved. He's got his children involved in it. So he's started creating that legacy that they will continue. Dan Gote has done the same sort of thing where his children are involved. But like some other people say, I want to get off this in a second, but very quickly, if your children can't do it, some people are passed on to their grandchildren skipped a generation and gone to the next generation so that's another that's another thing you that's the jewish style of the jewish so i said again i said that's the jewish style the jewish people yes. that's what they do they pass from one generation to another that's it the jewish that's people that's, mm. mm -hmm. that's what they do so if you were to mention mm. three things yes that have helped you through all these years of business what would they be and why and how have they helped you? Um, let's take one. I, I hope I'll be able to, to do this. The first one is, um, of course, you now say this, the almighty God, because um, I believe in prayers. I believe in leading and directions, uh, when to travel, when to buy things, how to buy it. And of course, I believe in tight payments, which... Is, is an area people don't want to talk about uh, because I believe that when you do things like that, uh, God himself will help you. And I believe that he's the one that brings uh, people to you and he blesses the work of, uh, of your hand, right? Now, the second thing I want to tell you about is particularly your, you must have what I call the guts not to give up. Yes. Yeah. The times you feel like crying, you really cry. <laughs> You will you you will cry. You will at times ask yourself, what, what what what? How did I get myself into this type of business? And then at the end of the day, you will have to face it up, or you blame people, or you otherwise. But I, but I need to tell you, my family, but then my wife and my son, they've been inspiration. Now, the third thing I'm going to tell you that has helped me is what I call the blowback system. From 1990, if we make 100,000 Naira and we take into consideration all other things and we have maybe 40,000 left, I'm telling you 30,000 of that money or 35,000 will go back to classical rentals. I, I have had many problems with my auditors. So, for example, if I make money today, before you say Jack Robinson, I've changed it to dollars or I've gone to buy products. So, I have products. I have that mentality of, as a farmer, don't eat your seed. And that's what many people do. You set up a hotel business, you set up a renter, you take the money that you make and you start sorting your personal life. I'm not saying that you don't do that, but I make yeah. sure that if Shola Yebade says, classicals, I want 5,000 chairs, I'll go into the warehouse. Okay. And I'll, but if Shola Yebade says, classicals, give me 5,000 naira, I may not have it. Mm -hmm. So that has helped us a lot. That people can always say, "Go and meet classicals; they have the product." So people should learn not to eat their seed, yes. which is one of the things that it, it can be very painful. Particularly, the blowback system helps a lot for you to grow from one strength to another. Um, just a few days ago, we did the yard sale, and why did I do it? I said, "Look, there are upcoming rental companies." They need these products. Our warehouse is filled to the brim. We have banquet chairs, maybe close to 3,000. The move now is people don't want to take the banquet chairs. They're talking yes. about chavari chairs. Very good. So why don't you let those ones go? There are tables, over tables, that we, we, we have a lot of. So I was amazed 
at the at the yard sale that the turnout was so good people were buying this and i can remember even one person not too long ago bought a lot of these banquet just and he he was taking it to shaki i said what are you going to do in shaki in oil state he said he wants to open an event center there so for people in shaki the banquet chair well, will still be yeah. yeah you understand what i'm saying so how are we able to do this because we keep on blowing back. and i'll tell you these things are expensive so mm -hmm. by the time you go to china you bring in a container and you have these products uh pre-covid the average party in lagos is 500 to 1000 people so for everyone that wants to do business don't touch your seed don't touch your money it is painful but try as much as possible that you blow back so here's it classical started with maybe four or six canopies in three months time we are 20. Mm -hmm. in uh, six months time we have about 25. from 100 chairs we go to 500. so you, you have the investment you have the capital you have the resources yes. to attend to people but it's not for them to now come and say oh you see have this old product now i'll tell you this you won't believe it the vvip chairs which are very expensive there are, there are new chairs that are in the market. And then we now have what you call marble tables. That is another area. So while people are still doing plastic tables, we started with marble tables. And before you realize, everybody will start bringing the marble tables. So you need to know what you are doing. Mm -hmm. And of course, I'm a member of the American Rental Association. I go for the convention every year in February. I learned so much. I'm a member of ILEA, which you are also... I'm a member of the uh, rental uh, association in, in, in Nigeria. So that VP. also helps. Vice President. <laughs> Thank you very much, my brother. So we find ourselves that we learn about warehousing. We teach ourselves about tax. We, we, we recently we visited the VIO last month and um, road safety to be able to help our members. So these things also help. Now, Shola, any business you are doing in Nigeria, if you do not study, if you do not try to improve, you'll be like the frog that fell inside the water, hot water, and stayed there. Or rather, the hot water was coming to the frog. You must improve. And that is what has helped us particularly to grow. So we keep on going for conventions. We go for conferences. We study. And so don't eat your seed. Integrity. Render good service. Improve. You cannot say you are still using typewriter in 2020. You're a dead man. I mean, this brings, I mean, the, the way you're, you're leading and you're making my life easy. In fact, half my question, I'm not even bothering to answer them because you're actually answering all of them for me. But let me ask you this. You know, one of the, the biggest things why businesses fail, 90% of businesses fail, is because they don't handle their money right. They don't handle their finances right. So, um, I mean, it takes cash flow, particularly your type of business, much more than mine. I don't mm -hmm. really need much cash flow because I get paid to do a job and the money is in that particular job. You understand? But you that you're continuously with your trucks, your rec staff, your moving equipment from one place to another, buy new equipment. Cash flow is important. So how have you been able, or what are the sort of tips that you can give to people? Because there's a lot of event people on this today that are listening. How you handle your finances over these last 30 years, what are the tricks that you have used? I know you talked about seed money. I know you talked about playing back. But those are the elementary. What are the other nitty-gritty? Because you said your auditors were not happy with you. So that means there are some other things that are going on which people are either agreeing with you or disagree with you about when it comes to finances. Okay, I'll tell you the truth, Shala. Um, we've not been very good or perfect in our accounting and all that. I can remember uh, the petty cash and some of the accounts uh, documents of about 15 years ago. I, I just threw them away. Um, you see, 30 years, you find yourself that you have employed accountants that have either messed up the accounts or either stolen your money, either make it not possible. 
But I'll tell you the truth. We have, yes, we have an account person, then we have auditors that come in once a week to look at the records. Keeping records, financial records, is a very difficult thing. Mm -hmm. But as much as possible, because it is a, a, a business that requires you buying diesel, buying a tire, buying that. Because you see, if you decide that you want to totally keep to the books and uh, trust the drivers, it's after they've loaded or they're, they're about to go, there is a okay, uh, engine oil. Uh, we need to get engine oil. And the accounts person is not there. You, you, you find yourself putting your hand in your pocket mm -hmm. and uh, giving them the accounts people to do it. Now, let me, let me advise anyone that is in the, the business. You are the chief accountant of your business. And I'll tell you the truth. Because um, I wish we had very honest people that will keep your books to the letter. You see, money is a little the money is a little devil. It's so tempting to many people. I have, I'll tell you this. I had an accountant once. And each time we make sales and he goes to the bank, all he was doing was pulling a teller and stamping it, and he was bringing back the teller. Huh. And we did not know that he was not paying it. And, uh, look, shall I, I'm going to tell you, I, was, I said I should write a book and tell you the truth. And you will find out but that he virtually is not going anywhere because he's the one that's going to fill it in the office until I, I, and, and, and this is where the thing is so bad about it. When you now say he's a Christian, you feel like crying. So by the time you now know about that, or you want to talk about uh, uh, an accounts person that the client should pay 200000 you say pay 100 to Classicus and pay the other 100 into this account. Oh. Now, all these things, they have, like, look, uh, uh, what are you telling me? We should not go into this story. But I'm just going to tell you one thing, anybody listening, be the chief accountant of your company. So the basic things are just the debit and the credit. Um, the, 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 what do you call it? The putting the records there because of the tax people when they come. You need to pay the VAT. You need to pay your, what do you call it, business premises, etc. You need to pay, oh, there are a lot of uh, payments, uh, yeah. mobile adverts, blah, 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 blah. But you see, in our case, because we are virtually uh, a, a company or a business that you need to continue to spend money. Uh, like I was telling the person in admin, I said, you are the highest spender here. Admin is like a, a, a department that they just swallow money every yeah, day. So By the time you get to the office, they're like, oh, buy raincoats, buy that one, buy pumping machine. Uh, yeah, I, I nearly went bunker four days ago. They couldn't see the drilling machine and we wanted to put up a tent. And I said, everyone is going to fall today if I don't see that drilling machine. Because I was the one that bought it in Dubai and brought it down. So you will make the noise. But like I said, you keep an eye on your accounts. You will, you will lose some money. You will lose yeah. some money. But you need to know one thing. Like I told you that blowback system will help you. Then you must be able to let go of some things in this country. A gate man, because of 500 naira, can mess up your whole party or the event. But what what is important for everyone is that try as much as possible to do your sales, your daily sales, you pay into the account. There's no way you're doing this business. You must have bank accounts. Your customers will not take you seriously if they're unable to transfer money or pay checks to you. Mm -hmm. Of course, you will get somebody like we've got an external auditor should come in. You pay them not much. They come and look at your books. They'll correct you. There'll be mistakes here and there. And that's the way you can get it done. But I'll tell you the truth. Being financially perfect is very difficult. Very difficult. Because both internal fraud, external, etc. And you as the owner overruling some financial decisions. Look, 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 we need to pay the custom duties. We need to, no, I don't care. Take this money and put this one. At the end of the day, you will find yourself not keeping your records right. 
so you you mentioned earlier i mean and I, I i remember having the same conversation with kemi and your own circumstances seem a bit similar but also different where you have a lot of um what do i call it theft a lot of people stealing directly or indirectly things disappearing um so when you look at your inventory how do you manage that because like you said you said your warehouse is overfilling when you first started people were selling off your goods what kind of system or how do you make sure that on a sunday when you are at church your staff have not come no, no. taken 200 chairs to go and sell no no all, all right um you, you you can't beat uh human beings you can't I remember there's a toll gate in Chicago, toll gate in Chicago, in USA. When I went to Milwaukee, and somebody was saying that they arrested those guys at that toll. They virtually were collecting the toll gate from Chicago to Milwaukee. They were virtually collecting money and using their own tickets, and they got them. I'm telling you. I they were when not it comes Nigerian. to Indians, uh, well, I'm, sure, I'm not going to be a party to that. I just try to tell you that. It happens throughout the whole world. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to inventory, your computer, your record tells you that you have 200 chairs. But physically, there are 180 there. How does it happen? Through deliberate acts of taking it and either going to sell it or use it in the house. I remember I went to visit one of my staff. He didn't know I was coming. As I entered his room, I found some of our stuff there. What will I do? I won't kill him. <laughs> I, shall I, it, it, it's, it's such a funny thing my brother so deliberately inventories may be lost mm -hmm. or they go to venue in the process of clearing they may decide that oh this thing is complete counting may be a problem and there are two or three more products in the, at the venue and they'll just they're in a hurry to go home and they'll keep quiet now, when the auditors now come in maybe three months' time or six months', six months time to come and take the inventory, they will say, where is it? How come 200 chairs is now 180? Or maybe along the line, I'm just driving along, and then someone will just come, Mr. Classicus, uh, the party they did in my house in the Kenya, there's still one more tent standing, I said tent, as big as that. And then I'll, maybe there's one chair, then I'll not drive down to Kenya. And pick up one chair and put it in my car and get back to the office. And they'll tell me that it is Lawrence, it is this one, it's that one. Now that's the price you pay for being big. Uh, you will lose some things. But like I said, you put an eye on it. Yeah, and in the process, you'll be able to know what. Because on Sunday, there's nothing you can do about it. I'll give you a start. You are having a birthday for your daughter. And the next thing is that. You tell them that you want a few more chairs and they now go back and pick some. And it's always a connivance between the security, the driver, and the people that will set up. But in the process, you will find out that your products, because they are not like the supermarket products that you come in and say, oh, how many toothpaste have you sold? Five. There should be five left. So, you will come back and you see your products there. So, the inventory matters a lot. You have your stock, and in the process, you will see them. But I've told you how you, you can have problems. You lose some deliberately, they forget some, or probably you will find out that it's only on the day that you are going to take stock that you will know what is it. But I can give you an example. I, I said it in my documentary. I got a job in Agbaroto in um, Delta State. The MD of Oshani Bank lost the mother-in-law and we moved in to that place. Uh, I will tell that story in full. Then our old father now died, Sido, a few weeks after. And immediately we were in that area, I understand that the, the boys in that worry, Delta area, surrounded our truck, thinking it was food. 
And I started sweating in Lagos. I had to fly down to Worry. And when I now got there, they only opened it and I found it was a tent. And I was setting up a tent for about 2,000 people. Do you know that when we set up the tent, they've never seen a tent as big as that where 2,000 people were there and I was there. And they started saying, we will see how this tent will come down today where this man not going to give us money. Are you with me, Shala? I'm losing you. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Good. I'm a, I'm and I can remember that that was the first time some of them saw a roasted cow turning on fire. They've never seen a whole cow mm. being roasted. And, of course, one or two of them just came there and picked up the cow and ran away with it. Huh. So, when we were, I'm telling you, you see, I've seen so much. When we were packing that night, I now found out that one of, one of our fans was still in the church. So I now had to weigh the options. Will I, because of one fan, still stay till morning and let these area boys come and meet us? I just told the boys, leave the fan and let's move on. So you can lose uh, things like that if you need to sacrifice life for the product. Yeah. And it, 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 it's, it's a very funny thing. Man, this is your business. I mean, when I hear the stories that you say, Kemi says, and other people that are in the rental business, you have to have a, a heart of stone. You have to be strong. You have to be strong. Now, now I'll tell you the story of Agbarato because it's a story that I will never forget. Still on this Oshani Bank job. It was a good job. They gave us money. Good money. And then we sent in two trucks. The first one got to Agbarato in Delta. The trailer, because we normally use trailers when we go out, got stuck in Umunede. And then the party was the following morning. And everybody was waiting. Everybody was looking for. And then they now called me in Lagos that, do you know that the so-called truck did not get there? I picked a plane. I, I joined the plane, rather, and I was in worry. By the time I got there, I didn't know what to do. And the people were saying, where are our tents? Where are the products? So I had to send the first truck to go to Onicha, pick another truck, and then they offloaded that trailer on the, which was on the highway at 1 a.m. Hmm. I nearly had, I, 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 my heart nearly, I don't know the word I'll use. I nearly crashed because I couldn't explain to a family that they paid me well that the truck got stuck on the way. I mean, this guy is faithful. Two trucks were offloaded that night and they were able to bring the products to, to, to Agbaroto by 6 a.m. Where am I going? I was praying only prayer, one prayer that day. I was saying, God, it will surely come to pass. So now when people give us jobs, when I find out, I say, oh, Saturday is our wedding in Ijebu or somewhere outside Lagos. And I tell them that I am going to leave on Tuesday. They start wondering that. Why do you want to leave on Tuesday? We face bad roads. We face armed robbers. We face police. We face all these local government touts along the road. They will start telling you they want more. So it is a job not for the faint hearted. You must just be determined. You must stick ahead of your workers. You must plan and you must pray. I think I've lost Shola. Hello? Maogani. <laughs> oh, Shola is lost. Too bad. Ta -ta 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 Shola, let's find you. Hello? Hello, Maogani. Are you still there? Oh, Shola is lost. Yeah, the line is getting a bit bad. We're close to finish. We're close to finishing anyway. So, I want to thank you for coming on board. Yes, it's been fantastic. But what I want you to do now, as I always like to do with all my guests, for the next 30 years, new furniture got coming, advice you want to give to all the event people listening, anything for the next five minutes is all you
right. Um, for everyone that wants to go into the rental business, I want to tell you that renting is a very good business. It is very wide. You can rent flowers. You can rent caterpillars. You can rent equipment. You can rent chairs. You can rent generators. Mention them. You can rent party equipment. The advantage of rental business is that it goes and it comes back. It goes and it comes back. Um, a tent, marquee, the lifespan is 10 years if you handle it very well. So that means that after a few years, you can start making what I call your profit, a profit. Then you must know that it's very capital intensive because we do not produce most of the things that generator we buy from abroad, uh, these we buy from abroad. Then our society matters where you want to set up. If I have a rental business in my village, will I be able to get the clientele? Mm -hmm. We focus. Know those that you are targeting. Are you targeting VI, Ikoyi, Leki uh, people? Or you are targeting Ajegule, Mushi, or Agbara? whatever it is, so you know your clientele. Then know what your clients want. What do they want? Do you like or they want good products, clean products, good services, timely services. Then you can now decide on moving your products from one level to another. Again, don't forget, the fact that you're doing rental business, I remember my father-in-law, then when we started with my wife, he said, you are a lawyer. Your wife is a medical doctor. And you want to go and do this dirty job called renting. No, rental business is no more a dirty job. See what it has become now with event planners and all that. So you need to continue to take your business to the next level. Then the next one is don't give up. If you give up, that is the end. You see, there always be light at the end of the tunnel. Most people give up when they're about to touch whatever they're right. determined or what is meant for them. You need yeah. to know. I, have, I can tell you, I have had not less than eight to ten rental companies that have approached me that I want to sell my products. I'm not doing this again. If you're a woman, let your husband or your boyfriend assist you because dealing with workers, dealing with area boys, and some tough things. Women have to take care of the children, cook, take care of the husband. How many women will be outside at 1 a.m.? You need your husband to assist you. You need your, your, your boyfriend. You need a good supervisor. You employ supervisors. Then if you're in the rental business, adopt the blowback system. It will help you. You will not have money in hand, but you will have products. Then, of course, you need knowledge to be able to know what and what. I know somebody that started rental business and invested so much on chairs. Now, let me tell you this. You do not make money from chairs. You make money from tents. One tent can go for 10,000 naira. One chair goes for 100 naira. So if you take 100 chairs, it's just not up to... So you need to know that. Then I will also advise you, go under what I call tutelage. Learn from the MacBees, the KFAs, the Classicals, the tent events, the Royal Oaks, all those that have gone through all this. Uh, I, I was trying to tell somebody the other day I wanted to buy something in, in, in China. And I said, look, when you go there the first time, you look at what you are buying. The Chinese are also dubious. I'm sorry to use that word. <laughs> yes. Yeah. After you've given them, they produce it. Come back home. When it's ready, go back again and stay there. I stay there. I see them load the container, close it, and it goes to the Guangzhou port before it start coming back to Nigeria. The next thing the person said, uh, why are you talking like that? It's because you have money and you're doing that. And I laughed. He will order, by the time they ship it to Nigeria, it will be something else. And you can't ship it back. <laughs> so learn from people that have more or less gone through this route. I am telling you, you will be able to make it. Then, no matter what people are saying, let there be many rental companies in, 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 the, in, the, in the city. 15 million people is enough market for us. Thank God for COVID. Thank God COVID is almost out. The, let the beat start again. It's going to be rock and roll, Shola. 
We're going back into the event industry. I'm very optimistic. 50 people is what they've given us. 50 will become 100, 100 will become 200. Our culture is the one bear culture. We'll continue right. to do naming ceremonies, housewarming. Uh, I remember in those days, somebody bought a radio in uh, Yaba. He called his friends that he should celebrate. <laughs> so we celebrate over everything. I'm telling you. I'm not joking, Shala. We celebrate. My, my son just graduated from high school in celebration. Uh, I got promoted in celebration. I bought a new house. Shall I just got a, a new G wagon? He'll call classicals, bring few well, chairs. Now. Yes, so, now. Uh, <laughs> so that is what I'm gonna say to anybody in the, that wants to do the rental. And some will say, uh, where do we get the capital? I advise as much as possible. Do not borrow money from the bank because it's always not easy paying back when the flow is not coming. But if you can get help from friends, associate partners, shareholders, it's all well and good. And if you borrow from the bank, try as much as possible to pay back. But you see, you cannot be doing rentals and be selling bread and then running that one. It will drive you crazy. Remember, Shala, rental business, we are the first at the party and we are the last to leave. When we set up our tent, we do everything. The caterers come, the decorators come, the band comes, and uh, everybody comes to enjoy. And once they they finish, you are you are the last to pack it. So it is thing that it, it's an, it's a work that at times I don't go to bed for days. I'm always at the venue, and you must know one thing: if you're in the rental industry, cross your T's and dot your eyes. Don't join them in Komata. Or oh, let's just manage it like that. No, 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 no. We should stop that nonsense. <laughs> just ensure that you are giving them white chairs, let it be white chairs. If it is uh, three canopies, let it be three canopies. You cannot tell your clients that, oh, it is Rasaki or Bashiru that was that didn't take the thing. No, 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 no. They have paid you for good service. Yes, you must render that good service. Profit, money must not be your paramount thing. That's where most renter people go. Money, 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 money. No, 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 no. Remember this before you go. A good name is better than money. Thank you, Shala. And that was, I will say a big amen to everything you said and for the advice that you have given us. We are looking forward to 30 more years and for you to pass ah. on to the next generation. You understand? Because at some point you need to retire. Akin, thank you for coming on. It's I'm retired. Thank you. Thank you for I'm coming so on grateful. board. Thank you for doing what I wanted, which is true talk, telling people how it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, sorry to everybody, I couldn't read out your comments because Aki was just giving us so much information. We appreciate all your comments, the feedback you are given. Aki, thank you so much. Take care of Shall yourself. I, and we'll thank see you. you again. God bless you. All right. Thank you. God bless you. All thank right. you all for coming. God bless you. Guys, what an amazing session. I mean, the one beautiful thing about as you can see, Akin from Classicus, he said it as it was. That is what we are about on Mahogany True Talk. We say it as it is. If you're in the events business, there was advice that they gave you that cost over, not just for like Cheryl that's doing flowers, games at events, you were there. There were other um, event companies. There are things that you can incorporate into your own businesses, even if you don't do rental. So, Guys, please take it on board. We're going to post the video as we always do. So you can always go back and watch it and take notes if you need to do it. Tell your friends and others that are in the industry to go and watch it. That is 30 years of experience that was given to all of you guys completely free of charge. Elsewhere in the world, he would charge you big money to hear that kind of advice. So guys, thank you so much. It's been another great session with um, Mahogany True Talk. Of course, we're here again on Thursday with um, Fashion Finance Africa chat room. We've got a fantastic guest coming up. And of course, we're back again next week, Tuesday on Mahogany True Talk with another great guest. Guys, remember, COVID is real. Stay safe. Practice social distancing.